With the rise of the Me Too movement, we've heard harassment is a problem in Washington state as well. I'm here with King 5 political reporter Natalie Brand, who's covered this story for us. And we're also joined tonight by special guest, former state representative Justin Farrell, who has recently spoken out about this issue and what you experienced in Olympia. And specifically, what did you experience? And this is more than just a wolf whistle down the hallway. Right. So there are several stories, but one um, egregious <clears throat> example was I was walking down the hall to my office and a lobbyist Jace gave me a pat on my behind. Oh my gosh. What else have you noticed or heard about or seen? Uh, well, another example is I was on the House floor late at night. We were passing bills late into the night and a male colleague came and gave me a massage at my desk and it was uh, awkward and, you know, kind of difficult to extricate myself from it and, and definitely unwanted. Do you recall what you said to him at the time? Uh, I was just uncomfortable and kind of tensed up. You know, I mean, most of the time, I think for women, you're not expecting something like that to happen and you feel uncomfortable asserting yourself. You don't want to hurt someone's feelings. You don't want to offend someone. These are working relationships that you have to maintain. Uh, so I was just surprised and shocked in both instances. Something we heard in the hearing in D.C. today on Capitol Hill is that it is difficult at times for victims, alleged victims, to, to report, to come forward. Sometimes they're afraid mm -hmm. or some say that the reporting and resolution process isn't working. Have you noticed that's the case in Olympia? What needs to change? Well, I think, first of all, it's it's true. I think a lot of women are worried about the he said, she said story. And we know that usually the see, she said part is not what people believe, typically. And it's a cumbersome process and takes time. And people fear for their jobs or the trust and the relationship building that's a real part of the job. So I would love to see mandatory sexual harassment training for all legislators and lobbyists. And that's something that's not there now. It's not. You come in as a new legislator, you go over sexual harassment policies, but just that once. And not lobbyists. A long time. And not lobbyists. And lobbyist. doesn't include lobbyists. Right. Right. When I was back in Olympia, there, were, uh, there was a, a time, I guess, many years ago where you could say, oh, he's from another a generation. That's what they used to do or say back then. Is there any excuse for that? now? Well, clearly there isn't. And the problem is it's not just a generational issue. And I think it really is getting in the way of women being able to do their jobs there. If you feel uncomfortable that you're going to be harassed, touched inappropriately, and a lot worse, it's really hard to be able to do your job. So in, we need to change things. In coming forward and speaking out, do you think that there are enough males or male lawmakers who are embracing this rising movement and realizing that this is a pervasive problem? Absolutely. There are great allies and great men there who want to do the right thing. And I think what we've all gone through, through the hashtag Me Too, movement is that it's so pervasive and I think it's kind of shocked everyone into talking openly about what has been secretive and in the shadows. When you came out recently, uh, one thing that came out that I found really interesting was there was a list of lawmakers and lobbyists for women to avoid that was kind of passed around or there was like this, you know, a group of people that were just not the kind of people you wanted to be alone with. Is, yeah, that, is that list still around? Do you still feel like you need to do this? Well, I think that that is part of what women do. They accommodate. I mean, up until this moment, this past fall, I think what a lot of women have done typically is, you know, make accommodations, go into a meeting with a lawmaker, with another colleague, or, you know, dress a certain way. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of things that women are trying to do to not be in a situation where someone is abusing power because that's what sexual harassment is about. But we need to change a culture. And final word, what would be your message to the people on that list? So my message is that we can change this right now to the entire legislature. We can change the culture there this session and make sure that women feel safe doing their jobs, by talking about these issues openly, having a reporting system that works, and making sure that every single person down there goes through sexual harassment training. Your, your hope that this system that works will be in place the next time the legislature meets? Can well, it happen? I think, I think we could do it. You know, you could say we're going to do sexual harassment training for everyone in January. I mean, you could just do that. And I think that there's the will. Uh, this session to make those changes. All right, Representative Farrell, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you.